Okay. Hello and welcome. My name is Jill and I'm one of the teachers with True North Insight. Thank you for joining us on February 2nd, 2022, which was a fun date to write today, 2222. And um, as part of my ongoing and really beginning work and exploration around anti-racism and dismantling my internalized white supremacy, I've been reconnecting and exploring my own ancestry and heritage and um, culture. I'm embarrassed to say, but honesty is a good thing. Um, <clears throat> that I, I didn't really think I had a culture for a long time. I'm like, I'm just white. And that's how much of a dominant culture was in my psyche and body that um, ignorance. And um, <clears throat> so, Part of that exploration has been looking at my own ancestry and heritage and, and my own, mm, also my cultural appropriation in, in aspects of, um, I used to teach yoga and um, uh, things like that. And to see what are my spiritual roots that all, all, all peoples, come from at some point, some earth-based spirituality. We've all come from that in all its different flavors and forms. And so all of this is to say that um, today in the Gaelic or Celtic tradition, um, today is, um, yesterday and today is part of what's called um, Imbolc or sometimes Imbolg. I M B O L C um, celebrations and festivals and um, traditions, and in Scotland and Ireland and Isle of Man, which are a large part of my heritage, um, um, it's it marks the beginning of spring, <laughs> which feels highly ironic on this day of huge snowstorm here where I'm living and um, it does not feel springy but um, it's part way it's about halfway between winter solstice and spring equinox this this time and it um, it's what has become groundhog day in America, some of the origins and traditions of um, seeing where the light is and how many more, how much more winter we're going to have and all that um, has a part of its origins in there. Um, and so as I was doing a little bit of learning uh, around this, um, one of the symbols of this um, this time in bulk is um, what's called Bridget, Bridget, Brigid's, there it is, Brigid's Cross, which is a symbol mm, that's woven from reeds that are pulled, not cut, and woven into, um, there's a, several different forms of it, but the most common is like four, four directions of a cross with a weaving of these reeds in the center. But the cross is not like um, what we think of as a, a Christian symbol of a cross, which a long one and short across. Um, it's equilateral, meaning it's four equal um, lengths. And one of the meanings of this symbol is there's several. But one of them is that it represents the four elements, earth, water, fire, air. 
Yeah, so that's what arose for me today um, because of the date on the calendar, but also the four elements you may or may not know is one of the practices and foundations taught by the Buddha. Um, it's the, one of the first foundations of mindfulness. The first foundation of mindfulness, of first of four, is mindfulness of body. And the elements is one of the practices and groupings in the foundations of mindfulness. And I find it a very beautiful practice, and especially at a time which uh, some of us were reflecting just briefly um, before the recording. This is a very painful time in, in Canada and in our world uh, with a lot of um, uprising and racism and uh, A lot of painful things happening and uh, this makes my heart ache and my mind ungrounded um, and uh, flailing I guess feels like sometimes and so these first foundation practices the elements are a refuge a skillful refuge, not bypassing, not avoiding, but to come home to ourselves, to find the ground, to remember that we are elements, we are comprised of the elements, we are not separate from each other, we are definitely not separate from this earth and all of its elements, is uh, really soothing and grounding and calming, and that's what what my system, one of the things my system needed in this um, past week. So I'd like to offer some brief reflections. Well, mostly I think we'll just go into the practice of it because, um, well, okay, I'll, I'll say briefly. The earth element is a, all that is hard and solid, um, um, heavy, rigid. And so when we do this meditation, I'll be guiding us to, we'll kind of do it as a body scan with the earth element going down, just feeling the sensations in the body of that element. And then we'll move back up the body with the um, water element, all the fluids in the body, it's, it's all the oils. Uh, um, I will be using the words that are from the sutta, from the written teachings, from the time the, of the, when the teachings were written down from the Buddha. And so, um, like if my mom was here, I'd have to <laughs> definitely give this precursor. There will be words such as um, urine and snot and spittle. She'd, she'd already have exited by now. It's like, what? No, blood, sweat, fat. These are fluids. These are water element in the body. And the Buddhist spoke, you know, used these descriptives to help disenchant us from this uh, delusion of perfection and beauty and like, we are these we are these elements we are these systems and to um just be able to practice with it in this way um and then we'll uh, scan back down the body with the fire element this is of course temperature coolness warmth but it's also digestion what's consumed uh what what we um digestion elimination all of those heat systems in the body, the electrical impulses, the nerves. Um, yeah, and then the last element is the air element. This is one that we may be more from practiced with um, in terms of mindfulness of breathing. But the air element is um, 
it's described in the sutta as the upgoing winds, some might call that a burp, the downgoing winds, flatulence, winds in the belly, winds in the bowels, winds that course through the limbs, and of course, the in-breath and the out-breath. So this air element is all through the body, not just in the lungs. Yeah. Um, and the practice is to see that this body is comprised of elements, same, same, the to, to dissipate our sense of disconnection from, from the elements, which are part of us, part of all things. Um, yeah. I think that's enough of it. Well, hmm. I'll say this. There's a, a lovely quote here. Where is that? Ajahn Mun, M-U-N, said, in your investigation of the world, never allow the mind to desert the body. So we were talking about continuity of mindfulness. Never allow the mind to desert the body first foundation, mindfulness of body. Examine its nature and see the elements that comprise it. Kindly, with kindness, see the impermanence, the suffering, the selflessness of the body while sitting, standing, walking, or lying down. These are the four postures of meditation, of mindfulness. Um, then its true nature is seen fully and lucidly by the heart mind chitta heart mind the wonders of the world will become clear oh i could use a bit of that in this way the purity of the heart can shine forth timeless and delivered wow that's, that's inspiring i'll put that quote below in the youtube recording and um if someone reminds me at the end of this in the zoom i'll um I'll pop it into the chat here as well. It's a really good one. I think that's enough preamble. That's practice because we all need it, I'm sure. So as was mentioned in that quote from Ajahn Mun, sitting, walking, standing, or reclining, all of these are postures for meditation. So what do you need tonight? If your energy is really low, you might want to practice some standing or you could walk back and forth in your space. Uh, if you're having a lot of pain, you might need to lay down. You could dim your lights. We'll see what posture is going to be helpful for your practice tonight. And once you've found your posture, bring the body to rest into stillness. And see what posture where the eyes is supportive for you tonight. Is it helpful for you to have your eyes slightly open with some light coming in? For some, it may be helpful to have the eyes resting on an object in your space. And for others, it's maybe very supportive to have the eyes closed. And then we just allow a few minutes here to just land into this present moment. As if you're the jar that we've sometimes uh, looked at all shaken up and stirred and we can feel 
the agitation from our day, from the week. You might feel that as a sensation of swirly or buzziness or fluttery energy in the mind, in the heart. If you notice habit tensions, perhaps in the face or shoulders, hands, belly. Seeing if they can soften or let go a little bit. Okay, and now we'll bring our attention up to the top of the head. Just like as if there's awareness is magnetized towards the area of the head and the skull. And just feeling this beginning with our earth element and feeling the hardness of the bone. You can feel the shape of the skull the density, the weight, the heaviness, hardness, solidity. And we can feel the areas of softness within this head, the area of the eyes, mouth, Nostrils, ears, different than the hardness of the skull. The hairs on the head are also part of the earth element. And even though the flesh and skin are softer than the bone, they're still um, partially can be known as this earth element in their solidity, hardness, form. And from the skull, we can maybe feel some sense of shape of the spine through the neck. That, that shape of neck bones. And the softness of the flesh around the throat, around those the neck spine, cervical spine. And then we just invite the attention to keep moving, just noting as much as we can about this earth element. I forgot the teeth, the hardness of the teeth. Sometimes in these meditations, we can tap the teeth together slightly just to feel their hardness. And then feeling the bones across the shoulders, back of the shoulders, shoulder blades. And the muscles and flesh around these arm bones. Part of the bone awareness, earth element is the bone marrow. The sinews, the 
tendons and ligaments, connecting bone to bone and bone to muscle. Feeling the hardness and shape of elbows. The form of the hands and the hardness of the nails. Earth element. And then letting the attention continue to move, we come back up to the top of the torso, feeling the rib cage form, shape, the sides of the ribs, back, front. And within that hardness of these ribs, are the earth element aspect of the organs of the heart. The lungs. And further down the kidneys at your low back, the diaphragm. liver, spleen, and the intestines, the organs of digestion, the organs of elimination, the contents of the stomach, these are all earth element. The feces, the contents of the bowels are earth element. Feeling the bones of the pelvis, that shape, that solidity, that form. Into the shape of the legs, flesh and bone and tendons, ligaments. Knees, lower legs, and feet, many bones of the feet, the Hardness and form of ankles and heels and toenails. This is called the internal earth element. Both the internal earth element and the external earth element are simply earth element. should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. And now we'll Bring that scan back up the body with the water element. In the feet and legs. So there may be, there may be sweat at the bottom of the feet, 
If you're warm where you are, there's blood, there's lymph. In the sutta, they, they refer to oil of the joints. So we can feel the knees, the fluids around the knee. the upper legs, blood and sweat glands, fat, pus, and into the pelvis. Urine is part of this water element. into the stomach and digestion organs, the bile and the phlegm. And the internal organs that we also were feeling the earth element of them, they all have an aspect of this water element. The fluids of these organs, the moisture. So just feeling the sensations of flow in the organs. It has the quality of smoothness. And the water element also brings cohesion, home, holds things together the way water holds flour together. Make dough. Another moment here, just feeling into water element in the torso. The blood being pumped from the heart. The lymph that is all through the body. Spinal fluid. And then when you're ready, feeling the hands. Sometimes we can feel a sensation of flow or a bit of pulse in the hands. Hand up the arms, aware of water element through the arms, through the skin, in the bones. And when we feel into the area of the neck, we can begin to feel moisture in the throat. The water element in, in the ears, in the wax, in the mouth, in the nostrils, and in the eyes. And in the brain. Both the internal water element and the external water element are known as simply the water element. Should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself, just water element being known.
And again, we will let the attention move down the body, this time with the fire element. In the area of the skull and the head, you might feel sensations of temperature. Perhaps the tip of the nose is cooler than other parts of the head. The electrical impulses in the brain. The area of the mouth is the fire element is that by which every all that is eaten and and um, drunk um, and consumed and tasted becomes digested. So we can feel that attention in the mouth of what we've consumed. And how it moves down the body towards digestion with the fire element. Tension moving, perhaps noticing warmth in armpits, coolness on other areas of the skin of the arms or hands. All the nerves of the body are sending electrical impulses through the spinal cord to the brain and back. fire element. The energy of the pulse, the heart, the movement, the electrical impulses that are pulsing that water element in relation to the Earth element, these are all intermingled. And feeling into the belly and torso and the digestion. Fire element. Legs and feet, checking out temperature, warmth, coolness. Sometimes there can be sensations of vibration. And then knowing the internal fire element and the external fire element are both known as simply the fire element and seeing that with proper wisdom, this isn't me and mine. It isn't clung to. Lastly, we'll move up the body with the air element. The air element has a quality of supporting, of pushing, of distension, expansion.
Attention moving up from feet through legs. Aware of the space and air within the body. And we come to the torso. There's what are referred to as the upgoing winds and the downgoing winds. The winds in the belly, the winds in the bowels. Winds that course through the limbs. And of course, the in-breath and out-breath air element. Let's just feel that for a few moments. Perhaps with this air element, we can really feel how inner and outer are not separate. We can feel this air element coming in through the nose or mouth and out. We can also feel that fire element as the breath is warmer as it leaves the body and cooler when it's coming in. And as the sutta says, with each of these elements, directly feeling and knowing this internal air element is not different than or separate from the external air element. And that it's not me and mine. And then for a few moments here, just resting with a whole body awareness. Earth, water, fire, air. Not separate. In a few moments, I'll ring the bowl three times. Thank you for your practice of um, exploring these elements, this first foundation of one of the aspects of the first foundation of mindfulness.
And in the in the suttas, in the teachings, part of the description as I was reading it through the meditation, part of it includes uh, all these mm, with each element, you know, what what particular characteristics and organs and tissues it are can most be known with that element. And then it says, um, for instance, with the earth element um, or whatever else internally belonging to oneself is solid, solidified and clung to. And that is then called the internal earth element. So when we cling to these elements as being mine, my shoulder, these are, this is my gut, this is my bones. Um, when it's clung to, it's seen incorrectly. That And then it goes on, when it is seen with wisdom thus, that this is not me, it's not mine, it's not myself, This the, these elements are the same as external elements, elements and it's same same when we see it with wisdom thus it's liberating it frees us from the delusion of separation and the delusion illusion of yeah separation separate self so um that's a very important part of this teaching of the elements is when it's clung to, it's being seen incorrectly. <clears throat> I love the way Pascal Beauclair um, has, or I've, I've maybe others have said it as well, but I've heard it from him. Um, he uses it in different forms, but renunciation or freedom um, he talks about self-appropriation, appropriating f from nature to take it to be self, me and mine. And he says, it's not you that's going to get liberated, it's everything else. <laughs> it, because we've, we've taken, we've appropriated from nature to, to say, this is me separate, continuous, you know, um, and when what liberation is, everything else gets liberated, that gets let go of and seen clearly. To give back to nature what is, is nature. And I apologize to Pascal for <laughs> not articulating his beautiful teaching the way he does, but it's, um, something that resonated with me. Okay, um, when I upload the recording, I'll try to remember to put that Ajahn Moon quote um, under in YouTube there, so you can look for that. And, and thank you for joining us on the practice there.